Welcome back to another 2015 scavenger hunt video contest entry whatever you want to call it for skin slips um, scavenger hunt that he's doing if you've been following along you know that there's a link below to uh, the original video entry to his contest that has a link to his channel link to the contest video as well as a link to the playlist uh, showing all of the video entries as well as individual links to each of the additional 10 videos if I get to that many. Um, this is uh, part 5 um, where he wanted me to pick a film um, what do you call it? Your favorite post-apocalypse. Now if you notice he, he didn't say your favorite post-apocalypse film. What he was looking for is the actual thing that brought about the apocalypse that you know your favorite thing that brought about the apocalypse whether you know be zombies or um, you know a virus or nuclear holocaust whatever it is right and then talk about the the movie for that and so for me I chose Daybreakers now a lot of people give Daybreakers some you know some flack um, at first I did as well um, it wasn't what I was hoping for, and I think that's what a lot of people's problem with the film was. Um, the film uh, is from 2009. It's directed by the Spearig brothers, uh, Michael and Peter, um, who had only done one movie before this. So think about that when before you <laughs> before you start, you know. Harkin on Daybreakers. They had done Undead. And people who saw Undead, it's an Australian film from 2003? Early 2000s. Yeah, whatever. Um, people who had seen Undead, you know, it's like anything. Comes out on the festival circuits and stuff. It was getting like critical praise like this was something really really cool all looking forward to seeing what um, you know the these two guys um, would do next and you know it's like some six years later and we finally get word boom they're coming you know new movies coming out it involves vampires we had undead we're doing vampires oh you know so obviously everybody who has seen undead really looking forward to uh, Daybreakers. This now is a big budget film. Um, you know, Undead wasn't so much. It was, is, I believe, it was an independent film. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it had like a budget of a million dollars type thing. You know, a standard. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say low budget. This was this was a medium budget film. And you know, Daybreakers on the the other hand is more like a like twenty million twenty. 20 to 30 million dollar film um, so there's obviously a big jump and uh, the Spearigs both wrote and directed Daybreakers, they both wrote and directed Undead, they also did some of the they did a lot of stuff, I think they did some of the visual effects and they worked with other stuff they, so they were very very hands on, so Daybreakers is very much their film and essentially uh, it's Oh, it's coming up soon. <laughs> um, the the whole story for Daybreakers is it's like the year 2019, and um, a virus or or plague of some sort has turned um, most of the population into vampires. Um, and of course, vampires need blood, but because you know most of the people are vampires, there aren't enough humans to feed off of. Um, and enter the main character who is looking for an artificial blood supply. So looking for a blood supplement, so something that the vampires can use uh, so that they don't have to feed off of humans um, and eventually, you know, everything will be okay for them. So the film stars several, several people. Um, Ethan Hawke is the the hematologist who's you know looking for this blood supply he's the main character um, it's uh, also got uh, Willem Dafoe who's sort of 
uh, he, he sort of um, the le I guess you call him the leader of the good guys, the humans. He's a human. And then you've got Sam Neill, who is the uh, owner, operator, controller, COO, CEO, head vampire guy to the company that Ethan Hawke's character works for, which essentially um, it's it's a blood bank, which has humans. They actually have humans. They they go out, they capture humans, and they bring them in, and, and they sell the blood. So you know that, that's their company. That's that's their way of making money. And so those would be the the essentially the three main characters. There's other characters in the film as well um, that play you know important roles, but they're not really. I wouldn't say they're really well known. So you, no point in mentioning them. And the reason why I chose this was for multiple reasons. Um, because there's multiple, and I mean multiple, cases of apocalypse in this in this film. First is obviously the vampire virus that comes in and uh, essentially turns the Earth into a a vampire world. So you've got that apocalypse showing up. I believe it was, uh, they mentioned it was like a, a first bat bite. Some some bat was infected and it bit somebody or something like that. And then it spread like a virus, right? And it's the vampire virus is, is the first cause of apocalypse in this uh, film. Um, and of course there's obviously the, the remnants of the human race that are struggling against the vampires. And Ethan Hawke essentially plays a vampire who's sympathetic to the humans and won't drink human blood. Um, you then get the fact that there aren't enough humans left. Um, they've killed all, you know, most of the humans, and and they have, uh, as the movie indicated, a month left before they run out of blood. So then you have the second apocalypse, which is actually happening during the. Um, film and it's sort of a, that's it's the cause of the, the reason this film is all built around um, if a vampire doesn't get enough blood because here's what, one of the things about the vampire if the vampire doesn't get enough blood these vampires essentially look human they're intelligent they're just like you know you know your Dracula's right um, if a vampire doesn't get enough blood he essentially goes feral um, and over time, will eventually, you know, he'll be, he'll look more like Nosferatu than he will Dracula. Um, and so, because, you know, you have this, this problem with, with the blood supply, you know, there's more of these feral vampires. Um, the other thing would be that if they feed off of another vampire, so, you know, they're getting really, really hungry, I'm going to go, you know, like humans, you're hungry, can't find food, you may eat a dead body or something. So, if you go and you feed off of another vampire, that's actually bad. It may kind of help your hunger for a little bit, but you turn feral quicker. Worse yet, if you feed off of yourself, because, yay, hey, whatever, you know, like humans, you can drink your own blood if you know your, your, your urine and stuff like that, if you happen to be... Um, dehydrated and can't find water. There are ways to to prolong your life um, that way. But, you know, if a vampire tries to suck their own blood, apparently that speeds it up even further. So, I mean, they almost, like, within instants, you know, like, could be days instead of weeks, um, they will turn into this feral, like, um, crazy vampire, which has, you know claws instead of hands if at all maybe wings and you know just crazy and they act more uh on instinct rather than intellect so uh you have that going on in the film then there's kind of a third and it doesn't it it's sort of hinted at uh in the film and that is um a cure for vampirism because that's what the humans are trying to get You've got Ethan Hawke's character who's trying to find a blood supplement so they won't have to eat humans. But then you've got the humans trying to find a blood supplement um, that essentially cures the vampires and turns them human again. And so what happens with that is it, it could essentially bring about a another 
apocalypse for the vampires, right? Won't give anything away whether they get to it or not, but if you think about it, if you have a cure for a disease, then if you manage to get that cure to enough of them, then the, it's a sort of like a disease, uh, an apocalypse for that disease. So in that sense, there's always the, there's a, a hint um, towards the end of the film that there might be the apocalypse of the vampires in a different way. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, they're going to die anyways. Yeah, you know what? Now that I think about it, these humans, maybe they don't know that the, <laughs> the vampires are running out of blood. <clears throat> then again, it doesn't say how long the feral vampires last without blood. And I guess a world full of feral vampires would be worse than a world full of intelligent vampires? I don't know. But, yeah, that's the reason why I picked it, was that there was multiple apocalypses going on this. Plus, you know, a vampire apocalypse, you generally, I don't know that I've ever seen that. I, at least I can't remember thinking about a film with a vampire apocalypse. Um, as for the film itself, I like it. It is a, it's a, Visually, it's a beautiful film. The acting is fantastic. The directing is great. Um, I think the, one of the problems and this problem I had with it was it turned more into the relationship between Ethan Hawke and his brother and, you know, sort of, a, it was more of a moral story rather than what I wanted to see when, you know, when I saw the trailers and stuff. Um, and that was a world where it was populated by vampires. Um, you get cool things, you know, starting off, uh, they have an underground tunnel system so that vampires can walk around during the daytime. Um, shutters come down over their windows. Uh, their cars, uh, have, you know, shutters that come down and cameras so that they can drive during the day. Uh, most of the time vampires, you know, I guess sleep during the day still, um, but it at least gives them the ability to go out during the day, and then you have like warnings and 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 such like that, um, where um, the you know the community set up by the government saying you know what hey guys it's an hour till sunrise better get inside, you know things like that, and I wanted to see more of that going on in this film because that would have been so much that. That was what intrigued me about it. That's what I was looking forward to. Um, I would have liked more about the um, actual coming about of the van. I would have liked. I would have liked to have seen the prequel to Daybreakers, to be honest, um, and then had Daybreakers have more of that. What eventually happened after you know after the the apocalypse starting event happened, you know, took hold and and society of vampires. Um, took over I guess and so that's where I was kind of disappointed the story itself is fine it's nothing groundbreaking other than the fact that you know it's vampires but it, it's we've seen a lot of the stuff in Daybreakers in other films we've seen it in Blade who's trying to come up with you know a cure for himself um, any of the sort of like modern well mostly Blade I guess there aren't too many other modern vampire films that I can think of, but Blade, we, you know, Blade's done it in multiple things where companies, you know, vampires are around, well, it, a lo there's a lot of stuff from Blade in this film, like the Blade series in this film, so those aspects weren't exactly new, and I, you know, people who are obviously into this genre have, I, they saw the Blade movies, I mean, you've seen the Blade movies, so... A lot of the stuff that would have been new and interesting and, you know, kind of groundbreaking was, you know, it was already done. Um, and in that sense, you know, people were were a little bit let down. But honestly, the film, it's not bad. Um, it's not bad at all. It's, it's a decent watch. Um, it just, yeah. I really, I... I wanted more about the downfall of this vampire society. There's little, you know, 
news shots and things like that to try and forward what is happening in the world, what is going on, why things are the way they are. Um, but I would have liked it to have actually happened in the uh, in the movie. I would have liked to have seen more of this vampire society and how it works. Um, but most of it is all built around news stories, um, conversations with this, you know, involving this company that the, the Sam Neill runs and, and Ethan Hawke works for, and then a coffee stand in the subway that, you know, puts blood in the coffee. Um, and that's, that's how they sort of tell this story of uh, the apocalypse that's happening, the, the blood shortage apocalypse. And I mean, it, it's creative. Uh, don't get me wrong. It is creative. I just, w I, I wanted to see more about what this is, you know, what society is doing, but instead they decided to go with, um, the real, you know, the morals and the relationship and the feelings between all the main characters and their sort of their drive. They were more interested in the drive. Well, honestly, there is a, a big um, message uh, lying behind this. It's not just about vampires. It's about us as a human race and how we deal with our food and what could possibly happen in the future if, you know, we blah, 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 blah. Um, so, I mean, that message is there. It's it's not super subtle, but it isn't hit you in the face type thing, but it is there. And I think that's kind of more, you know, what would you do if you ran out of food? How would we survive? Um, what would our, how would our morals go? And yeah, it's, you know, it is corporate, uh, corporate America or whatever you want to call it. Um, more important is making money more important than um, surviving and honestly right now we're in that that situation honestly I think Daybreakers should come out right now Daybreakers is a film for now it was a little ahead of its time it was the message that is making money more important than the survival of the human race um, is a message that really sh would hit home in the last couple of years um, and probably would have gone over better now than then. But that being said, I enjoy Daybreakers. Uh, I love vampires. I love vampire movies. I love viruses. I love virus movies. Um, I love, you know, outbreak movies. And so this sort of combined everything in there. It's got a very dark, sci-fi looking... Um, aspect to it it's the aesthetic is it, I liked it I really enjoyed it I just I like everybody else it wasn't what I wanted the movie to be um, but having you know gotten past that I saw it I watched it I now you know and I own it I've seen it probably about seven times um, I've now gotten to the point where you know what I can enjoy it for the film that it actually is um, and yeah I think it's a great addition to the vampire uh, films uh, it's, it's a little bit different it's um, different enough well, it's, it's actually quite different <laughs> what am I saying but at the same time it's it's familiar um, and so you know I, yeah what can I say if you haven't seen Daybreakers check it out um, just don't go into the film with any thoughts or desires and just watch it for what it is and I think you'll probably enjoy it more than most people on their first viewing so yeah again link to the original contest video down below click on it to check out all the other videos in this series for the 2015 scavenger hunt from skin slip but until next video take care